Okay, today I am talking about reframing thoughts. What does that mean? I've talked about this in videos before, I know I have, but this is a refresher if you're new to the channel and you haven't heard me talk about it. Reframing thoughts would look like something like this. You're in recovery, your body's changed quite a bit, and you look down at your legs, you know, you're sitting here, I'm looking down at my legs and I'm like, <gasps> you know, you have this moment of panic. I can't cross my legs like I used to. Oh my gosh, I see, I see stretch marks on my, my legs. I see cellulite. Oh my gosh, my legs are huge. What am I doing? I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, and this panic, oh, this rapid fire thoughts. You're just sort of like, we got him in, we got him in, go for it. Tackle her while she's down, right? It's that kind of feeling that takes over you and you feel like you don't have a fighting chance. It's just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't. And everything you've been doing up to that point in recovery, all of a sudden seems like the absolute most silly worst idea you could have possibly done. Who, what were you thinking to be eating unrestrictedly? I can't believe that you're actually believing that that's going to get you recovered. How are you thinking you're going to do that without becoming addicted to food? How are you thinking you're going to do that without being 800 pounds? How are you thinking you're going to do that? And, and all the doubt and the fear would just consume me as if like I had absolutely no vision of what I was trying to do in that moment, I actually recover. And so when that would happen, what I would do is I'd grab my phone and i just kind of write down that thought because that thought would get me every time. And there were a lot of thoughts like this that would get me every time. But that was one of them. My legs are huge. Oh my gosh, my legs are huge. So I'd write it down. And then I would say, my legs are huge and I'm in active recovery and I'm accepting my genetics and I'm no longer restricting my body and I'm getting my life back. And so I went from my legs are huge over time to immediately going to and I'm getting my life back. It didn't happen instantly, but the more that I went through that exercise and kind of like, and it was, it, it, it felt tedious at first. And I was just like, this is stupid. This isn't doing anything. But what I found within a matter of days, even weeks, maybe weeks was that eventually I was like, wow, I'm starting to correlate the legs and I'm hopping and jumping through all the scary crap and getting to, and getting my life back. Huh? So I started making this link in this correlation with like my body changing and getting my life back. And as I was doing that, I was experiencing or having little glimpses in my life of getting my life back. And that would look like going out on a date with my husband and being able to eat freely and being able to, to order what I wanted and carry on in conversation and gen genuinely laugh out loud at something that he had said that was funny, um, to be able to like keep the conversation going without any kind of thoughts or fears going on about food, I would have these instances and just small glimpses throughout recovery and they kept getting more and more frequent as I went you know, through the stages of recovery. But those were the things I'd cling on to and I'd be like, you know what? Yes, my legs are getting bigger, but that date was really fun. Or yeah, you know what? Like I don't fit into any of my pants and I don't recognize my face, but that trip we went on last weekend, mm. that was so much fun. It was so different than I'm used to having. It was so much fun. And so I started again, just linking and making these correlations with bigger body and what that actually meant of me fully recovering and me getting my life back. So, so that's exactly how I would kind of retrain my brain to not freak out, kind of control that thought and then turn it around and have it be something that felt positive. And the power of that was amazing. I was actually really skeptical at first when I started practicing this. And then I realized, you know what? I don't have anything else. To, like, I don't know what else to do with these thoughts. And so I may as well try to start reframing them. And as I did that, and as I was consistent with that, I started feeling that same way about my belly that felt very different. I would remind myself, you know what? This belly and then allowing this, this stomach of mine to do whatever it needs to do right now is letting me feel more free. As I'm doing this and I'm fighting against eating disorder thoughts, they're becoming less invasive. They are becoming less like they have a hold over me. Yes, they're still there. And yes, I have these panic moments and these thoughts that freak me out. But if I can retrain my brain how to stay calm in those moments and I can retrain it to think in a positive way rather than I'm doing something wrong, suddenly, you know, eating unrestrictedly again and going back to like the basics of what I'm trying to do felt more achievable and it felt like I was winning at recovery instead of losing at my eating disorder. And so I encourage you to identify what are the thoughts that you're having over and over and over again that trip you up every time. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a, you know, health headline that you read about something such and such, um, you know, that sugar is addictive. And maybe that just every time that you want to eat sugar, just bam, sugar is addictive. You can't have it. Bam, sugar is addictive. And every time that you see it, you're just like, no, I can't, I can't. What could you do to, how could you reframe that? Well, sugar is addictive or feels addictive for people who limit sugar and restrict sugar. 
sugars also will feel addictive to people who are extremely undernourished because your brain needs glucose to survive. It needs it. So it, it, it hasn't had enough of it. So of course that's the first thing you're going to crave. And so you can kind of start talking yourself, um, spinning these scary fear tactics that your eating disorder is going to use against you and you can turn them into a positive. And then you be like, you know what? This makes perfect sense that I'm craving all sugar. Every time I think of sugar, I'm eating it because I'm recovering. And so I know I'm going on and on here in this video, but my point is don't just listen to these thoughts that trip you up and then just kind of like passively just let them happen and hope they go away. Actively go against them and be like, not buying that anymore. It's a load of crap. I'm moving on with my life and I'm recovering. Not going to believe that. And you continue taking one, one step in front of the other until you finally will have these thoughts and they will have no power over you. Okay. So that's my message to you today. That's just a little like, you know, tip on how to actually rewire because it's one thing to do the actions, but it's another how you need to change your brain. You need to change your thoughts around these things. So start actively going against them. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.